This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. So we have a very interesting show today for you. And so this is my question. We've all heard about fake news. What about fake money? You know, when I was in uh, Vietnam in 1972, I knew there was fake news. Because every time I read in the, in the Stars and Stripes or the regular newspapers about battles I had fought in, what they reported was not real. It was propaganda from the U.S. side, body counts and how well we did and we were winning the war when all the guys on the ground knew we were losing the war in 72. So today, finally, people are waking up. There's fake news. What an amazing thing. But what about fake money? You know, there's even fake gold today. Everything is fake today. So this is the question to all of you. You know, like in 1972, I bought my first ounce of gold. I couldn't buy it. Um, I tell the story of flying behind enemy lines in 1972 to buy gold, rough gold, I mean, you know, fresh out of the ground gold. But I realized I didn't even know what gold was. And then I found out to be an American, it was illegal to own gold in 1972. And as a young man, I'd never heard that. I said, what the heck is going on? Why is it illegal to own gold? So I finally, uh, our, our aircraft carrier sailed into Hong Kong and I found a gold Krugerrand and I bought it. I think, I think it was about $50. I still have that little Krugerrand and today it's worth about approximately $1,500. So when I talk to audiences around the world, I said, now did that one ounce or approximately one ounce of gold, did it get bigger? Now, is it now 200 ounces? Did it get bigger? No, it's the same dinky little coin from South Africa, the Kruger Rand. It was $50 then and it's $1,500 today, approximately. So what does that mean? If the Rand, the Kruger Rand didn't get heavier, bigger, or more valuable, nothing changed on it. What did change? And what changed was the U.S. dollar, because in 1971, President Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, which is why my rich dad wrote to me in 1972, and he says, watch out, the world is going to change. The world's going to change because now we have fake money entering the system. And today, I still hear, you know, if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, lesson number one in Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. And yet, I would say 99.99% of the people are on their way to work or working very hard for the U.S. dollar or the yen or the euro or the peso. And I, I don't even know if they know it's fake money. So the question we're going to talk about today, what's real and what's fake money? And what the heck are you working so hard for? Personally, I don't work for the U.S. dollar because it's fake. Since 1971, it's lost 95% of its purchasing power. And yet I hear mothers and fathers say to little Johnny and Susie, now save money, you know, work hard and save money. Are you nuts? Why would you save something that's going down in value? It doesn't make sense to me. So pay attention, it's a very important show today. Today we have two guests. This is Chris Blasi. He is the chairman of Neptune Global Holdings, LLC, a holding company for global precious metals. And he has a patent on a new technology called the PMC Ounce. And our other guest is Dan, Dana Samuelson, president of American Gold Exchange. And American Gold Exchange is a leading national precious metals and rare coin company specializing in dealer to dealer trading and direct sales to the public. So once again, I met both Chris and Dana just recently at that fantastic New Orleans investment conference. You guys should go to it too if you really want to open your eyes and find out what real investing is. So anyway, I bet met both of them. They're both hardcore gold. I'm hardcore gold. And the reason I'm hardcore gold is I don't like working for fake money. So Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you, Robert. Tell me a little bit about Neptune Hold Global Holdings, please. Sure. So Neptune Global is a started as a full-service precious metal dealer, which we still are. Um, 
we only deal in physical, meaning so whatever you know products that we make a market in or or make available are always going to be physical. But the well, as, as compared as compared to the ETF, right? Exchange absolutely. We're, no paper, fund, paper gold. No, no derivative, nothing like that. Absolutely, because you know we ascribe just like yourself that at the end of the day, it needs to be the actual physical product and not some proxy that gets created by Wall Street. Correct. But the real thing I want to point out, because thanks for uh, talking about the PMC ounce, we actually took the best of two worlds. We created a product called the Precious Metals Composite. And uh, basically, for each PMC ounce you buy, there's a fixed fractional amount of gold, silver, platinum, palladium that is in a special allocated account. And depending on the client's uh, size of their purchase, the, the, amount, the corresponding amount of gold, silver, platinum, palladium is assigned to them at the depository level. So it's a big difference. This is a storage account that the depository has the client's name as their what's owned by them. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you better explain that because when people buy GLD, which is a gold ETF, and let's say I spend $1,000, gold goes up, and I cash the, goes up to $2,000, I cash in my gold ETF. I still just only get cash. I don't get the gold. Absolutely. And, and the ETFs, I mean, not all ETFs are created equal. I will grant that. Some are, you know, some take advantage of using derivatives, you know, and I think if we read GLD and the prospectus, you know, terms like held and allocate an unallocated form, you know, and there's actually no cap on that. That could mean 100 um, percent. It's basically you're buying a share of stock that basically is issued by a trust, and there's this long condo, condo, convoluted path between you and the underlying metal for what's actually there. Right. And Where here, and, and, and many times the ETF doesn't own any gold anyway. Absolutely. So when that prospectus says, even if you look at the opening line of GLD, it says uh, basically it's here to track the price of gold, right? right? Some people may not pick up on that. Tracking the price of gold is not the same as owning gold. Other thing I've heard is that for every ounce of gold, they estimate there's 50 to 100 ounces of gold pledged for every ounce. I mean, that's how levered out the thing is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's of course, with any prospectus, you they, you can't get the specifics, but you look at lines like they hold it in unallocated form. It talks about not auditing the sub storage accounts. I mean, these are all ways to distance yourself from actually buying gold, securing it, and having it all there. Right, and so the PMC ounce there actually is gold, silver, palladium, and that behind of it. Absolutely. Gold, silver, difference. platinum, and palladium. And it's weighted so that it's a logical allocation. So basically, Robert, we created, it's a turnkey physical precious metals portfolio in each PMC ounce. And just it just depends on how many PMC ounces you buy that's going to determine what your total weight of gold, silver, platinum, palladium is. And I'll bring up this as, as, as investors get exposed to it. They see the logic. It outperforms, especially it's on a risk-adjusted return. I mean, it's not a managed account. We're not buying and selling. So when you buy, it's a fixed amount, static in a storage account. But the logical weighting smooths out the volatility, common if you're in just one or two metals. I mean, I think silver is a tremendous example. And the PMC ounce is actually, obviously, we've made a market in this since its inception in 2008. We're actually, it's actually being made available for other dealers also. Good. So it's really growing and proliferating. Good. And the, our other guest is Dana Samuelson. So Dana, you're the, you're the president of American Gold Exchange, but more notably, you worked with uh, great Jim Blanchard, didn't you? Yes, uh, Robert. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be hired by Jim in 1982. Uh, he was the person who was most responsible for the re-legalization of private gold ownership in 1974. Uh, and when he helped achieve that goal, people came to him and said, well, how do we buy this? And he said, well, I'll sell it to you. So he became one of the nation's uh, leading mail-order precious metals and coin dealers in the country in the late 70s through the 80s and 90s. Uh, sadly, Jim passed away in 1999, but I was fortunate enough, enough to work for him for years, and I was a protege of his, and uh, I've continued on what... Uh, what he started, which is a physical precious metals dealership. Uh, we buy and sell with the public and with the trade. 
and we are actually uh, delivering to people. Uh, the golden rule is those who own the gold make the rules. Uh, we want you to have gold physically in your hands. So we deal in the mainstream modern bullion products like the One Ounce Gold Eagle, the Canadian Maple Leaf, the South African Krugerrand. Uh, we also do a, a pretty big volume of old European gold coins that were made in the 20s and 30s uh, that really don't trade for any higher price than modern bullion coins today that are scarcer. Uh, than modern bullion, and we also do a pretty large volume in old U.S. $20 and $10 gold coins from the same era when a $20 gold piece was actually money before paper uh, took over the uh, currency system. So uh, the reason I have both Chris Blasi and uh, Dana Samuelson on is I would say Chris is, you know, pushing the envelope with the PMC ounce, which is a diversified investment into multiple precious metals that you own, you have a certificate of, and Chris holds it for you. And also we have Dana Samuelson, who I would consider, he's a young guy, but he's an old timer to the industry. And for those who may, may never have heard of James Blanchard, well, most people haven't unless you're a gold guy. And uh, like I said, in 72, I became a gold bug, and I bought my first ounce of gold in Hong Kong, and I turned into a criminal because Americans were not allowed to own gold. So I had to smuggle that damn thing in to the States. There was no TSA at the dock when the aircraft carrier docked. But uh, then in 74, it became legal again. So I'm legal now. So I invited both men because they have both historical val uh, insights into gold and also be comparing it to Bitcoin. And for all of you who are concerned, what's real and what's fake out there? And so I'm, I'll make a pretty bold prediction here. In 20 years, the U.S. dollar as we know it will not be here. It'll disappear as all fiat currencies do. Now, it, there'll be, still be a U.S. dollar, but it can't be the same thing. So all of you out there who are saving money, especially the yen or the renminbi or the peso or the euro, Listen to this program, because if you're holding paper, you're holding nothing. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit richdadadvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of honor or the psychology of debt among other great audios for pennies you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race so please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters that's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now log on to richdadradio.com while you listen now back to robert kiyosaki Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today's program is about what's real and what's fake. You know, how many of you are working for fake money called the U.S. dollar or the yen or the peso or the euro? So this is your program. Once again, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android. And all of our, all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for two reasons. One, if you listen to this program once again, called Repetition, you'll actually be smarter, you'll retain more. And secondly, you can share with your friends, family, and business associates and discuss this program, especially if they have that insane idea of saving fake money. U.S. dollars, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. You know, all you guys who are into paper, I think you drank the Kool-Aid made out of paper. So this is a very, our, our, our program is designed to disturb you today because if you like saving paper, man, you better wake up and smell the Starbucks today, okay? 
So our guests today are Chris Blasey, chairman of Global Neptune Global Holdings, LLC. And he's talking about this new invention called a PMC ounce, which is a certificate for real physical plat palladium, platinum, gold, and silver. And also the other guest is Dana Samuelson. He's the president of American Gold Exchange out of Austin, Texas. And I bet both men at that fantastic New Orleans investment conference. Dana, I believe it was started by James Blanchard. Was that correct? Yes, yes. Jim uh, started the National Committee for Monetary Reform, and much like your rich dad, he understood in 1971 when Richard Nixon took the United States off the gold standard what it would do to the currency. So Jim was a hard money advocate immediately after that. He was also a history buff, and uh, that's how he ended up getting into the gold business uh, was by understanding that the depreciation of the dollar was coming and inflation was coming, and that's exactly what happened in the 70s. In, uh, in 1980, at that conference, he had over 10,000 attendees when the gold price had peaked at 850 an ounce. So it was one of the biggest conferences in the, in the world at its time, and uh, my good friend and colleague Brian London has continued that, uh, that tradition for another 20 years since Jim's passing. Jim instilled in me the, the, the gold fever, what it's like to be a gold bug. And I understood at that point in time, when I went to work in the precious metals business in 1981 as a clerk in a vault counting and weighing, that hey, this is real money. Uh, you don't have to depend on somebody else's promise of payback or full faith and credit in the government. So, uh, Chris, let me ask you this question. Why are you in this business? Why, why are you chairman of Neptune Global Holdings, LLC? Sure. So, you know, I started, you know, I come at, uh, way back in the 80s and 90s. I was working in what you would call a traditional broker-dealer world, right? The, the, the world of paper, paper assets. And, but I, I loved to do my research on macro economics and geopolitical things. And my feeling was there are cycles that uh, assets like gold move through, um, secular cycles, bull and bears. And in the late 90s, I saw that gold, and I'll use that as a big representative for all the precious metals, would begin a secular bull market in the new, in the new millennium. And uh, it did. I had set up a company in the company in 2001, the exact year gold bottomed at 255 an ounce. And this secular bull market is playing out. It's, uh, they generally run 20 to 25 years. We, they're generally three legs. We've already done the first leg, which was 2001 to 2011, 12. Then the multi-year pullback and 50% retracement in price. That's exactly what happened. Right? Gold went from 255 to 1900 all the way back to 1030. And now it's in the second year of the third leg. And the third leg is the big one. That's when the biggest gains will come through. So, you know, it looks like the forecast was right. I was so inspired and I was so excited about what I saw coming with the secular bull market. That's why I had to open up a company and be directly involved and kind of bring the good news, you know, from a financial perspective about gold to, uh, to the investing public. Yeah, that's my, you know, my friend Jerry Williams. He's a guy I buy a lot of my gold coins from right here in Phoenix. He's American Precious Metals. And he started off like you, Chris. He was in the stock market, and then he started seeing what was going on. Like we're all, you know, Jerry and I are about the same age. And it just didn't make sense. You know, how could you get people to drink the Kool-Aid or accept paper? You know, it just really, it's not real. It's fake. It's all thought shaping. It's, yeah. it's complete. It's all marketing. And and, and, and they just print it and they print it and they print it. You know, if you understand the, what's it called, the fractional reserve system, they can print as much as they like and people are there just gobbling it up. I'm like, are you nuts? But, you know, I've been the oddball all these years. I just quietly buy gold every time it went down. I buy more gold and I buy more gold and I buy more gold. And now I have thousands of ounces of it. And like I said at the start of the show, my first gold ounce I bought a Krugerrand in Hong Kong is now worth fifteen hundred. And I asked people, did the coin get bigger or heavier? No, it didn't. The dollar went down in value, and all these idiots out there are saving cash. It doesn't make sense. Does They're it make so sense? Basic. Does it make yeah, sense to you? Does it make sense to you? 
No, they're still, they have them. It's all, you know, when people talk about investing and they say investors are rational and, you know, they look oh, at the fundamentals. It's, it's the polar opposite. It is all psychological. And emotional. And, yep, it's emotional, and they have everyone, you know, it's a marketing machine. Uh, people don't realize that the sell side broker dealers are marketing machines. They're not consultants. It's not there about really what's best for you in the long run. No. And people have a normalcy bias, right? So it's all based on confidence, right? What's the U.S. dollar back, Don Robert? Nothing but confidence. And it's all about thought shaping and keeping that confidence there. And people have a, an attention span or no appreciation for history. And they all suffer from what they call the normalcy bias, right? Whatever happened for the last maybe two, three decades will go on in perpetuity. That's what they believe. And we know from a historical perspective, a couple decades is nothing. Right. And all fiat currencies go through the same life cycle, which is eventually they're going to go down to nothing. Right. So once you again, it's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. We're, we're asking people this. Are you working hard for fake money? A thing called the U.S. dollar or worse, the Japanese yen or the peso or the euro or the Singapore dollar? Are you nuts? You know, they can print as much as they like. You know, everybody today knows that the Federal Reserve Bank under Bernanke and Yellen and Greenspan, they've never printed as much money as they have. And historically, this has happened throughout every change of empires. The Chinese tried it 4,000 years ago. The Romans tried it, and now the U.S. is trying it. But the difference is this is a global basis. And I, I still talk to people and says I'm saving as much money as I can. They, I mean, they're saving paper, fake money that they can print. So, Dana, as an old guy out there, how does it feel? I mean, you know, people look at you like you're, you're wearing, you know, big goofy feet and have a red nose on. You're a clown selling gold. I mean, all these years, right? Well, <laughs> It's not like quite like that, but we do go through cycles, and I think Chris is exactly right. We are in uh, the third cycle of a of a secular bull market, and it's just the third leg of the most explosive leg is just beginning, and it's it's because of all the debt in the world. That's why gold hit nineteen hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, it's, it was a complete lack of confidence in the financial system. That's the same reason it hit eight fifty an ounce in nineteen eighty a lack of confidence. And the, the, the thing I've always loved about gold, and perhaps the most important lesson I can teach your listeners today, is that gold is one of the only assets in the world that isn't simultaneously someone else's liability. And it's been, that's why it's been currency for 2,000 years, and silver as well. And when the money, when the, when the precious metals go out of the currency, that's when the civilization starts to decline. And that happened in the United States in 1933 and again in 1964. And now we're seeing what a world full of fake money is, where printing can happen as it needs to happen because the politicians say they need it. Okay, so talk about printing. What's your opinion of cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin? Well, I know a lot of people are very excited about it. And there's two things, right? There's a blockchain, which is a technology, which is going to be going to grow and proliferate and be used in business processes and transactions. And then there's a quote unquote currency like Bitcoin that uses blockchain. Uh, everyone is a little blinded, I believe, because of the rise in the price of Bitcoin. But, um, you know, we know history that that does not automatically validate something as being credible in the long run just because people chase the price higher. I think in theory, the cryptocurrencies, at least the private cryptocurrencies outside the system, can get people excited and they seem like they're getting, they have a refuge from the, you know, the fiat monetary system. But these have just started out. Unfortunately, they're going to be co-opted by the same governments that they're trying, people are trying to circumvent. I think people believe it's a lot easier than it is to run a private currency, a digital currency, outside of the control of government. I don't believe it's that easy. I, did, I spent 12 years in big technology, and I don't think people fully understand the capabilities of big technology. So, Dana, what do you think it is? What do you think about crypto? Well, I think it's a, it's a nice alternative for people who want to have a monetary trading system outside of the traditional currencies. But as far as an investment uh, like the way Bitcoin has uh, risen so strongly in price, it, it'll be diluted. There will be other alternatives, and there already are. Well, there already are. are. 
Everybody's yeah. getting it. Not everybody, but a lot of people are creating their own cryptos. I was just, I just in, have, I was just in China. Yeah. I was just in China last week. They don't accept cash anymore. It's crypto. The Chinese have leapfrogged us, and we're and we're all getting excited about it now. Well, the Chinese government controls it, of course. But you know, I don't. I really. You know, what I say to people is this: If you like crypto, study it, become a student of it. Just like I became a student of gold back in 1972, I'm still studying it. But if you're going to go into crypto, study it. Mike, this is my question I'm going to ask both of you. And then when we come back, we'll answer the question. Do you think the U.S. dollar and Bitcoin will be here in 20 years? I know gold will be here. That's why I buy it. You know, I bought another 100 ounces the other day. Because I know it's going to be here 20 years from now. But I don't know about the U.S. dollar, the yen, especially the yen. Oh, my God. Or even stocks and bonds and ETFs. I don't know because it's all paper right now. So when we come back, we're going to ask them that question. Both Chris Blasi and Daniel, Daniel Samuelson, let's go into the future 20 years. Will the U.S. dollar or the yen or the yuan or the euro be here? And will Bitcoin be here? That's the question. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. This is The Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, you can listen to The Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes and Android, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive it so... You can listen to this program again and you'll learn twice as much because repetition is how we learn best. And also you can share this program with friends, family, and business associates, especially people who still believe in that antiquated idea of saving paper money. Why would you save paper money when Japan is printing billions? The U.S. is still not printing as much but doing the same thing Japan is. Why would you do that? Why? Why would you save fake money? Our guests today are Chris Blasi, chairman of Neptune Global Holdings. And our second guest is Dana Samuelson, president of American Gold Exchange. And for full disclosure, I do buy products from Dana. So I asked the question before we went to break of Chris Blasi. I said, um, do you think the U.S. dollar and specifically Bitcoin will be here in 20 years? Chris, yes or no? Dollar probably, but greatly devalued, so no purpose in chasing it. Cryptocurrencies, yes. Bitcoin, maybe, but Bitcoin at a far lower price than it is today. Got it. And Dana, what do you think? I agree with Chris. I think the dollar will stay, but I think its purchasing power will continue to, to uh, diminish over time as it has. And I think Bitcoin is way overvalued right now, but you never know when momentum will stop. There will be too many other alternatives. The field will be diluted. The price will fall. So would you be saving dollars right now? No, absolutely not. That's, that's why I like being in the gold business myself. Okay. And Chris, would, would, you, be, Chris, would you save would convert, dollars? Nope. I convert my uh, dollars to real assets. Do assets that last, like food, real estate, exactly. that stuff. Anyway, also, there's fake gold and fake silver now, right? I mean, they're actually, it's the same as the uh, Romans did years and years ago. They're mixing some base metals into fake coins and all that stuff. Is that correct? Yes, that's happening. We're having uh, Chinese ca are counterfeiting uh, gold uh, bullion products. They're coming into the United States primarily through eBay. And, and it's, a, it's a small problem, but it's growing. Chris, do you know much about the fake gold and fake silver? Yes, I follow it. And, you know, to Dana and your point, exactly. Now, for us, like the, we just buy directly from the sources. We don't buy off the street from people. But anyone who's going to buy a coin, uh, or especially, you know, a numismatic coin, you need to work with people like Dana. I mean, I, I think it's very dangerous to buy person to person, especially over an eBay or something. I mean, that's, that's you're asking for trouble. Yeah, everybody so listen to that. Listen to that. So, Chris, give me one more time because you're the new, you, you brought the new technology on called a PMC ounce. And one of my heroes, James Rickards, has endorsed a PMC ounce. So, what is the advantage that the PMC offers that, let's say, regular gold doesn't? Sure. 
So you're still owning all the regular precious metals. You're not going outside of it. But the weighting of it, the logical weighting, has a better risk-adjusted return. It smooths out the volatility. We show that right on the chart on our homepage. And at the end of the day, part of portfolio management is not just getting the return, but managing the risk and volatility is risk. So Jim Rickard analyzed it, loved it, has visited the depository, and has recommended it several times to his subscribers of his newsletter. Yeah, in my opinion, having Jim Rickards endorse or recommend your PMC ounce is like having God endorse it. <laughs> so, I mean, that boy, I, he's it's one of the smartest guys I know. It's very much appreciated. I don't have to tell you, you can imagine the, the value, because it's great to get that independent analyst with his credentials to, to study something and step up and say, you know what, this makes a lot of sense. This is a good value. Yeah, and Jim is an insider into this whole world of finance. We have him on our program on a regular basis, and that guy knows what he's talking about. So that's why if he endorses the PMC ounce, fantastic. Now let's go to Dana. You know, I, I always tell people don't buy a numismatic. And yesterday or a couple of days ago, I'm at the New Orleans conference and you sweet talked me into buying numismatic. I can't believe it. So would you explain to the audience, because I've never bought numismatic. I always just buy the most recent gold or silver coins. What's the, what is a numismatic coin for those who may not know what it means? Well, numismatics are collectible coins that were that are of historical nature. Uh, the U.S. made twenty-dollar gold coins from 1850 to the to 1933, when we stopped making gold coins completely as currency. And um, a lot of the coins that were made were melted or lost to the ravages of time. But we do have survivors in uncirculated condition today that are um, available to to buy and sell. They're private non-reportable bullion items, basically, with muscle, as we call it. There were a lot of $20 gold pieces with the St. Gaudens design that were made in the 1920s during what we call the Roaring Twenties now that uh, got out of the mint and went to the banks but never got put into circulation when the stock market crash came in 1929. And those bags subsequently ended up going over to Europe in trade payments because when the Depression was full on, France and Germany, not so much Germany because they were still weak from the war, but France, uh, Britain, and Russia, they didn't want paper money. They wanted gold. So bags and bags of these uncirculated coins went to Europe at that time, and they've been coming back slowly and at other times at a faster rate since gold was re-legalized in 1974 in the United States. So it wasn't me so much sweet-talking you at the New Orleans Investments Conference, Robert. It was the market telling you these are a good buy because we're having an off year in this business. Uh, the stock market's strong. Uh, the promise of tax reform is right on the horizon. People are back in paper assets. So gold sales have been down. So premiums for these coins are very low in their cycle right now. Uh, for example, a Mint State 64, which is a near gem quality. Right, but but with numismatic, because they were used as real money, some have more wear and tear than others. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're not um, circulated coins, but when you take a, a thousand coins and put them into a bag, they rub against each other. Some get more scratches on them than others. And this means they're uncirculated, but they're near gem quality. They have fewer scratches than some of the ones that were at the bottom of the bag when the bag got tossed. And so a person like you has been in this industry since the 70s. Do you ever see the return of the value of a numismatic coin versus what I've been buying, which is a pure bullion coin like the Eagle or the Maple Leaf or the Panda? Yes, absolutely. So what my business is, uh, it, is to analyze what's when something's strong or weak. And right now, when these coins are low in their premium relative to their intrinsic content, they're a great buy. If the premium goes from 16% to their 10-year average of 32% or recent high of 65%, then we arbitrage that. We'll trade clients out of the 20 cents and back into gold ounces. They'll get more gold for their, uh, for their uh, saints than they will for their dollars without any extra out-of-pocket expense. Another thing you said is that numismatic coins are not reportable. What does that mean? Well, when you sell, the public sells back to dealers, uh, Canadian Maple Leafs, for example, 25 ounces or more, we have to fill out a 1099B like a stock purchase. We never have to do that with these old $20 gold coins. 
So they're uh, not traceable then? Well, we don't have to report them to the IRS. That's correct. Okay. Yes. The, other, the other thing, too, is I bought some British sovereigns from you because they're smaller. What is the advantage of a British sovereign? Well, uh, these are the same thing as the older U.S. gold coins. These were gold coins of the day. And again, you don't have to pay any real premium to buy them because they're already made. They're quarter ounce size. They're, they're were, smaller. They were, yeah, that's right. They're, they're trading size, basically. There's also Swiss 20 francs, which are the same thing, a little smaller. When World War II pilots were shot down behind enemy lines, they had a survival kit that had sovereigns in it, a couple of sovereigns, so they could barter their way back home. And you know, if you buy a quarter-ounce gold eagle today or a tenth-ounce gold eagle, you've got to pay a high minting premium for that because it's four times and ten times the time and effort to make that ounce of gold as a one-ounce. But these old British sovereigns, they don't have collector value now. So you can buy them for a smaller premium, get a historical trading-sized gold coin at no more expense than you'd pay for a modern bullion coin, or actually a smaller expense. So, so because they're older, they're less valued, but also the cycle is down on numismatic or collectibles. And right, right. Uh, but in Europe, you know, if something's 1500 from the 1500s, from the 1600s, that's old. These coins are from the teens, 20s, and 30s. It, the market hasn't developed yet where these coins truly are collectibles yet. At some point in time, they probably will. So, Chris, uh, I'm going to ask you this. What do you, what's your crystal ball saying about precious metals versus dollars? Or, the you know, what would you say to savers right now? Sure. I think this is a – we're in the early stages of the third leg. Um, this is a great opportunity for people who are either going to add to their position or finally get in, and which I would strongly encourage they do. You know, take that position in the precious metals, get into it now. We have a bunch of very good years in front of us. Um, but if you wait, you're just going to be giving up some potential gains, in my opinion. Um, it's not going to be a straight line up. It's going to be one, uh, two steps forward, one back. But the, uh, the trend is positive, and paper currencies are going to continue to devalue. There is no doubt about that, in my opinion. And by the way, everybody listening, I'm not endorsing any of these products here. You know, I, I tell you when I buy, and I tell you that's about all I'll tell you. You've got to make up your own mind on that stuff. So, Dana, what would you say the future is? Why, why should people buy, uh, what, up, what about regular gold coins, but what about numismatic? Because I, I've badmouthed numismatic all these years, so now I have to eat crow because I bought a pile from you. So what do you have to say to the listener out here who has no idea what I'm talking about? Well, I think anyone that's getting started should start conservatively and buy gold bullion items like you bought, Robert. And as you continue to build on your portfolio and accumulate more, numismatics have a place as a way to leverage uh, your gold holdings modestly and perhaps more than a little bit modestly when times are when these coins are really in demand, which they're just not right now. So, you know, a, a smart, hard asset portfolio has gold, silver, platinum, and palladium in it. And as more as, it be, as the base builds out and you want to build your pyramid up, there's a place for numismatics as a, a way to leverage and have privacy. How much, how much is a British sovereign going for right now? Uh, about $325 a coin with a melt value of about 300 That's pretty good, 10%. Actually, actually a little less. About, uh, they're selling for 5% right now. I've got my numbers off. Jesus. Yeah, no, they're cheap. They're cheap. Yeah. That's why I bought them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, uh, Chris, how much is a PMC ounce going for? Uh, purchase price today is about $92.25. How much? Per ounce. $92.25 per ounce. Is that because a large percentage is silver? Yeah, so physically, each ounce is mostly silver, but actually, when you look at the amount of dollars going into silver, it's logical. It's only around 20%. Um, but because to balance it, you know, the disparity in price, right, the gold-silver ratio and such, that it's predominantly physically silver. But we have all these charts uh, on the site that give you all the details. Okay, and, and they can I contact you at NeptuneGlobal.com? Yep, they can do info at NeptuneGlobal.com, visit the website, NeptuneGlobal.com, and hit the contact page, or our phone number is there to call and talk to a specialist. And Dana, yours is Amergol, A-M-E-R-G-O-L dot com? Correct. And uh, people that want to email can just simply put info, I-N-F-O, at A-M-E-R 
gold.com, and that will go to our office. And our website is the same, www.amergold.com. We have live pricing. It's an information-rich website with uh, complete transparency. So the final question is this. Chris, um, my, not my friend, but guy I respect immensely, his records, he says the price of gold should be around 10000 an ounce. Do you track yes. with that? Yes, I do. And um, obviously the PMC ounce is there to take advantage of that. It has all the, it's going to capture all the upside and all the metals. And believe me, gold will take off and hit that. It will not leave the other metals behind. I mean, there's big expectations for silver, and silver will probably even outperform on a percentage basis. Right. But, I, think uh, he was, I think he was saying that if gold goes to 7,000 an ounce, silver goes to 400 an ounce or something like that. Yes. I mean, the, the, the upside is tremendous. And you know what? During these times when, you know, silver's kind of a little floundering right now, what people don't realize is, and uh, I know Dana knows this, in the last five years, palladium has been knocking the cover off the ball. And, you know, unless you actively got involved in the palladium market or were an investor in the PMCS, you missed out on it. So you don't know when the metals are going to hit their stride, and that's why we have this blended, diversified offering. And, Dana, 10000 an ounce, what do you say? I think that's a little optimistic, but I certainly see 6000 to 8000 as a real possibility just because there's so much debt in the world. And if there is the currency crisis that I think could happen, if it happens... 10000 will probably happen. If, if that happens, silver will be easily over $100 an ounce, probably 250 to 300 So, gentlemen, thank you once again. NeptuneGlobal.com, Chris Blase, and AmerGold.com, Dana Samuels Samuelson. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And we come back, go to Ask Robert. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit richdadadvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of Honor, or The Psychology of Debt, among other great audios. For pennies, you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race. So please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters. That's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now. Do you own an LLC or LP? Are you aware of the new rules? The IRS has mandated new audit rules that require every LLC operating agreement and LP limited partnership agreement be amended. This dramatic requirement has never before been experienced, and changes must be made by December 31st. Corporate Direct, owned by Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton, can guide you through these new rules. Call 800-600-1760. That's 800-600-1760 or visit CorporateDirect.com. Contact Corporate Direct today to stay in IRS compliance. Financial freedom begins with financial education. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Today's program is, are you saving fake money? And what is real money? You know, there's fake news, but there's also fake money. There's even fake gold and fake silver today. That should tell you something, okay? So I want to thank our two guests. is Dana Samuelson, American Gold Exchange, website amergold.com, and also Chris Blasi, website neptuneglobal.com. And he has the PMC ounce, and Dana is one of the old-timers with James Blanchard, the guy who got Amer- allowed had Congress changed the law to make people who own gold legal, Americans. Because I was a criminal back in 1972 when I bought my first ounce of, well, I don't know if it was an ounce, my first Krugerrand, paid 50 bucks for it, and today it's worth about 1,500 bucks. The thing I always ask the people who save money, 
Did the Kruger Rand get more valuable? Did it get bigger? Did it get heavier? Or did the dollar just come down in value, purchasing power? Your choice. So anyway, we're going to uh, listen to our programs anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them so you can listen to this again, but more importantly, share it with friends, family, and business partners, people who insist on saving money, saving paper. Are you going to be kidding me? Why would you save toilet paper, something they can print every day? Or cyber money, you know what I mean? You better, if, if you're going to go for Bitcoin, study it, become an expert at it, because everybody's printing it today. I mean, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is now calling me and says, hey, I'm going to start my Bitcoin. You want to join me? I said, no, I don't think so. You know, I'm going to wait for the crash to come, and then I'll find out who's left standing. Maybe Bitcoin, maybe not. So you can submit your questions to Ask Robert at Rich Dad Radio. Dot com. Melissa, what's the first question? Our first question today, Robert, comes from Federico in Los Angeles. Favorite book, Cash Flow Quadrant. If cash is trash, what is the proper percentage of gold or silver that I have to put aside for when the next crisis hits? Well, James Records, who wrote the book, The World to Ruin and uh, the case, and the new case for gold and whatever, the currency wars, he recommends 10% gold. So if you have $1,000, then you have $100 in gold. I mean, it's that simple. But as he says on his tape, he says, most people won't do it. You know, he says, they're just too lazy. It's easy to just go to the bank and save cash, which is trash. And the thing I really, I feel for people, the other day I was talking to this guy, his, his third child, and I said, are you saving any gold? He goes, no, I can't afford it. I can't afford it is the cry of the poor man. You know what I mean? He's just a poor man because he's never going to be able to afford it. Well, I've got a child, so I've got to save for their future. I said, why don't you save gold? The kid just was just born. No, I can't afford it. I'll say it again. I can't afford it is the mantra of poor people. That's why they're poor. Just like I have another friend who never has never gone to a gym. Never. And what he says to me is, I don't have the time. You know how hard I work? I don't have time to exercise. Well, that's the, that's the call sign of an unhealthy man. You see, the thing here is this, it's only between your ears. If you say you can't afford it, you're a poor man. If you say I don't have time to exercise, you're probably gonna die early. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Daniel in Miami, Florida. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It says, Robert, I know you are against using mutual funds and ETFs and would rather put saved money into buying gold or cash flowing assets. But isn't the hedge that gold gives you against inflation canceled out by capital gains tax? In that case, would it be better to risk putting money into paper assets that yield a higher return? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good, excellent question. You see, I never sell gold. I still have that first Krugerrand from 1972. And that's a very important question because on a macro scale, there is deep storage gold. Deep storage gold is gold that'll never come out again. It's like China has 2.7 uh, gold to GDP ratio. That means 2.7 of their gold, of their production is saved in gold. They'll never spend it. They're trying to get rid of treasuries, printed money. So there's there is deep storage gold and then there's free floating gold. And free floating gold is what you and I buy at. But there's people like me who are buying free floating gold and going into personal deep storage. And like I said, I've been buying it since 72. I don't save cash, I save gold. Because it's almost as liquid. But I'm never going to sell it, so I don't care about the capital gains, which is very high on gold. It's a very astute question. So I'm not against mutual funds and all that. I just don't like them. You know, why would I trust anything that can be printed when I can beat them in the debt market using real estate? But the other part that Dana Samuelson talked about was that numismatic coins are non-reportable, which means they're not really tracked by the U.S. government. So that was the real reason, I, you know, I, I backed up the truck with Dana because the premiums on numismatic coins are down. He's been around since the early days with James Blanchard. And I want gold that I don't have to report to my government. So this is what I say, if you're gonna buy something, study it or ask people who are experts and their field. 
But since I'm never going to sell my gold anyway, I'm gonna pass it on for generations. It's deep storage. I don't pay the capital gains. So that's part of your education, which makes you still have capital gains on stocks, <laughs> just not as much. Anyway, next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Thomas in Alabama. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Says, Robert, like you, I am also a Marine, and I personally would like to thank you for your service, not only to our country, but also for forever changing my life and the lives of countless others. The book Rich Dad, Poor Dad greatly improved my marriage, stopped our foolish spending, and has given us a path to success. Your other book, Why the Rich Are Getting Richer, What is Financial Education Really?, opened my eyes to what is really going on. My question is, how can we undo the damage that Nixon did in 1971? Can our country return to the gold standard? Or are we going to have a monetary reset? That's a very good question. And thank you for reading the, um, number one, I'm glad you saved your marriage. Number two, you don't have to thank me for my service because that's, I think we should all serve our, I don't serve my country, I serve our people all over the world. And you don't have to thank me for that. But anyway, the other thing is about thank you for reading Why the Rich Are Getting Richer, which is graduate school for Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I basically explain why I use the McDonald's system of business. As, as Ray Kroc of McDonald's says, Rick, McDonald's is not in the hamburger business. McDonald's is in the business of real estate. And Robert Kiyosaki and Kim Kiyosaki, we own the Rich Dad Company, but our real business is real estate because I want something that's gonna last. That's why I don't like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and savings. Because, you know, 20 years from now, my real estate will probably still be here. You know, I have one on Camelback Avenue, 5.6 acres. I think, you know, 20 years from now, it'll still be standing there. You know, it's pretty good, worth millions and millions of dollars. My tenant paid it off for me. I'm happy with it. But I don't know if the dollar will be here. I mean, these guys, are, you know, both Dana and Chris were you know, supportive of the dollar, but I don't see how they can be. I, I'm not supportive of it because just recently, China announced a gold-backed yuan, which means that they'll buy oil from Russia and Russia will be take payment in yuan or renminbi and they can trade it in for gold. So we're going back to the gold standard, and the sooner you get back to the gold standard, the better off you'll be. To hell with Nixon, he's dead. You know, he's not gonna be here 20 years from now because he's not here today. But you gotta be thinking 20 years from now. That's my point of view. I don't think the dollar or the Bitcoin will be here in 20 years. At least I'm not willing to bet on it. So that's my point of view on it. Right now, this whole thing, it's up to you to decide what's real, and what's fake? And there's fake gold coins now. So that's why you deal from reputable de dealers. That's why Chris Blasi says he doesn't take in coins because he does. He can't adjust them. He doesn't know the real or fake. But Dana Samuelson does, so that's why I buy from Dana as well as Jerry Williams. These guys have been around since the dark ages. And there's a lot of new guys coming into this market and they'll sell you anything. They'd sell you their mother to make a buck. So once again, thank you for your question. The question is what's real and what's fake? Once again, you can submit your questions to Ask Robert at richdadradio.com. And thank you for listening to this program.